Hello, my name is Mitchell S. Jackson, and I'm a writer and the author of The Residue Years, a novel and a hybrid nonfiction book, Survival Math. My creative writing project is a novel titled John of Watts. The book is inspired by the life of Eldridge Broussard, a Watts, California native who started an organization with the aim of using sports to help at-risk youth escape poverty. That group, however, later became known as a cult. Here is a video of Broussard confronting a news reporter well into the life of the group. Now, I wouldn't do you like this, brother, but you came representing them. I don't care about color. I'm not a racist. Yeah, I'm doing mine. And mine, I'm not, I'm not mine is to embarrass y'all like y'all embarrass me. Y'all chumps. Y'all punks. Matter of fact, CBS is a chump and a punk too, because they could come in and stop this crap. Y'all chumps. Y'all are chumps. You hear me? Y'all are chumps. Why are you and I'm going to get y'all. Are you talking to other media? I'm talking, talking to about. other media because they didn't do me like y'all did. Y'all did some stuff you may not even know about. I'm going to prove it. Y'all chumps. And I'm ready to deal with y'all. No fighting with no fists, no guns, none of that. Well, y'all chumps. That. No, I don't believe in that. I saw the Watts riot. I walked through that as a 13 year old boy. I'm fighting to see that that never happens again, and y'all ain't helping any. As Broussard announced, the Watts Rebellion had a great impact on him. Uh, he also must have been shaped by the other important events of 1965. Uh, that was the year of the March on Selma. It was the year assassins murdered Malcolm X. It was the year President Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act. The rebellion lasted six days, claimed 34 lives, and cost $40 million of damage. That rebellion, like any like many others, was incited by a traffic stop. And uh, here are a picture of the three people involved in that stop. There's Marquette and Ronald Fry and Rena, their mother. Eldridge Broussard founded his group Ecclesia in 1975 and here he is sitting with some of the group's young members during its nascent years. Looks like these are older slides. Um, soon though, the group began morphing into something other than what it was supposed to be. And that change included members being forced to sign a vow of poverty. I hereby declare all of my ambitions, desires, past and future commitments, relationships, expectations, assets, gifts, talents, and connections under the total control of Eldridge John Broussard Jr. All of my decisions, financial, social, recreational, educational, dietary, romantic, and any not mentioned in the above must pass his scrutiny and obtain his approval. I relinquish even the rights of decision making. Before long, that strict training and discipline of the kids became abuse. And on October 14th, 1988, four members of Broussard's group beat to death his eight year old daughter, Dana. Those members were arrested and charged and imprisoned. Broussard was later arrested and charged with child slavery, but he was found dead, dead in the same house where his daughter had been beaten before he stood trial. After researching Broussard's story, I thought it necessary to ground it in the history of black people in the West, which of course is the story of Southern black people migrating West. The following excerpt is from my prologue, which among other things, weaves the great Western exodus with the events of the Watts rebellion. A family like that and thousands of others rode a northbound segregated coach car, maybe glimpsing the deep green waters of Lake Michigan to the Central Depot and bide it before boarding the sun-colored city of Los Angeles steamliner and watch scroll past the windows and terminable Iowan cornfields, stretches and stretches of bucolic Wyoming grasslands, the Rockies jutting across a triple-hued low heaven the glittering expanse of Utah's salt flats, 
or else they piled all they could into a rusted Studebaker or Plymouth and ventured cross country, always some miles per hour below the posted limits, singing Amazing Grace, singing Up Above My Head, singing Jesus on the Main Line, drove with the green book stowed to guard against wandering into a sundown town. I am still in the drafting stages of my project, but what writer couldn't use time and a prime place to write? I am seeking a formal or informal writing residency. And uh, also I would love to talk to documentary filmmakers as I plan to produce a film in connection with the book. Thank you all for allowing me to share.